Hello everyone, welcome to chapter 4. So in today's chapter, we are going to focus on humaneness and reciprocity. Of course, we will tell a little bit about the loyalty and trustworthiness. So the major objective for this chapter is to understand humaneness as most important, the core value of Confucian philosophy. And the second is to understand reciprocity as a part of the humaneness, which is also of great significance in Confucius teaching. So humaneness in Chinese pronunciation, Ren, the rising tongue. So the Confucian, the golden rule. There are a variety of translations for this word. The um, benevolence, altruism, kindness, perfect virtue, compassion, humanity, and humaneness. So in this course, we choose to use humaneness. So humaneness is a term mentioned in the Analects for 109 times. So you can see that it's a very important uh, ethical term in Confucius' view. In the pre-Confucian texts, such as the Book of the Poetry, Ren is an adjective referring to the appearance of a handsome, strong, aristocratic man. So it is starting from the Confucius who transform this aristocratic ideal into the ethical ones. So it is almost a certain the complexity of its contents and also the preeminence uh, it attains among the uh, moral uh, qualities was due to Confucius. So let's look at this Chinese character. It consists of two parts, men plus two. So in the doctrine of the mean, there's a sentence, Ren, Ren ye. So, humaneness is characterized by one word, men. Being filial to parents and affectionate towards relatives is taken as the greatest application of humaneness. So, men plus two is extension of one's innate morality. So, this is a very important definition. Because in Confucian view, the virtue of the humaneness is meaningless unless it is involved in the actual human relationship. You may ask me, well, yes, do not talk, talk to me about it. We know this is the good, okay, this is the, the, the supreme uh, morality. Okay, we know we want to be good to other people, but how to apply it into practice. It seems to, so remote to us, and in, especially in modern days. And uh, we, are, we are surrounded by these uh, material prosperities and everybody wants to succeed. Everybody is talking about different things far away from a humanity or humaneness. I know. So let's just imagine what happened 3,000 years ago, indeed, in response to the inquiries by his uh, uh, disciples, Confucius gave different instructions, and they did, he did not give them the definitions of the term, however, they gave them the, the details of how to do things to the specific needs of the inquirers. It indicates the possibility for expressing humanness by each person as long as he as long as he wanted to do it. 父子, 什么是人? 人者, 爱人, 爱君上, 是中, 爱父母, 是孝, 爱兄弟, 是替, 爱朋友, 是信, 总之, 由中真挚的, 去爱天下, 你认为值得你爱的人, 这就是人。这是一种非常难以达到的境界，但是我们必须努力地追求。
并达到这种境界，因为一个不仁之人绝对不会真正尊重并推行周礼的。天下无道，礼崩乐坏，违礼之事不断发生，屡禁不止。正是由于执政者心中无人，无人必然无礼。So such behavior is more like the moral act in our daily life. So again, in today, we still can see, well, humanness itself doesn't change. And it is we changed. It seems like that we lost our original heart, awareness of our heart. So of course, you may argue that the humanness is so difficult it is true. Confucius also said, How dare I claim to be a sage or a human man? Perhaps it might be said of me that I learn without flagging and teach without growing weary. So you see that you are right, it is true. The difficulties between the ideal humanness and real is obvious. And then, what we should do. So, still, according to Du Weiming, he was saying that it is right. It sounds a little bit conflicting. On the one hand, humanness seems to be available to all of us who ask for it. But however, on the other hand, no matter how hard you strive for, you will never get it. It is conflicting. But one concept is clear, that everyone has this a fountain of internal resources. If we wish to fully express this, this expression is a tip type of humanness. So this expression is very difficult between the ideal and the real. So that's why the Confucius, when he was talking about his favorite disciple, Yan Hui, he himself even admired him. The master said, in his heart for three months, Hui could live without deviating from humaneness. The others attain humaneness merely by a day or a month. So you see, it is true. Fuzi, I still don't understand what is a person. 克己复礼为人，那如何去做呢？非礼勿视，非礼勿听，非礼勿言，非礼勿动。But however, when we dig into this term humanness, when we try to find the origin of this humanness. And we still can find a reasoning, a clue about why we human beings, we should abide by this humanness. The Confucian scholars, they're talking about the true heart, the original heart. And look at these three sentences said by the master. He was saying that one who gives clever talks and wears an ingratiating smile is seldom found humane. And he was also said, it is only the humane man who is capable of liking or disliking other men. And is humaneness far away, something remote? If I desire it, humaneness will come forth. So you see that it seems like that the humaneness is something that we can touch we can take our initiative to be actively to generate such concept. Well, here, the important term is the true heart, the original heart. We need to go back to the mentions, the four roots of heart. The first, he was saying that the feeling of a commiseration or the pity and compassion is a root of the humanness. And he emphasized that everyone has a tendency for the goodness. So this tendency for the goodness in some way is the original heart. And 
Of course, in another sen sentence, he mentioned that. Mensha said, the ability possessed without learning is original and good ability, and the intelligence possessed without thinking is original and good intelligence. There are no young children who do not know loving their parents. When they grow up, none of them will not know respecting their elder brothers. In this case, humaneness simply means to love parents and righteousness simply means to respect elders. Nothing other than these feelings will be extended to the entire land. So this is something about the original and the good ability, liang neng or liang zhi, the intelligence. And so when the famous story about the an analogy made by the mansions is about a baby who is about to fall into the, the well. So everyone has this instinctive actions to save the baby. Now, if anyone was suddenly to see a child about to fall into well, his mind would be filled with alarm, distress, pity and compassion. That they would react accordingly is not because he would hope to use this opportunity to ingratiate himself with the child's parents, nor because he would seek commendation from neighbours and friends, nor because he would hate the adverse reputation that could come from not reacting accordingly. So you see that this is an instinctive um, actions that everybody will, will react accordingly. So again, according to Du Weiming, when he was saying about the Lu Xiangsen's study of the learning of the heart and the mind, and uh, he emphasized that when we, today when we're talking about the self-realization and self-actualization, the initial step for this word is to be aware of the activities of our heart. So in order to be aware there is a great body in our body, to underscore the uniqueness of being human. So he emphasized that initial step is to awakening the heart to make it sensitive to the world around us. So Xiang Sen's learning of this heart is to have access to the original heart underlying the great body. So you see that in the previous chapters, we're talking about the, the, the great body, the, break, the great man and the, the great will, that means the big mind, the big will. Again, so now in this chapter, when we try to understand deeply about the humanness, we still need to find, we, we have to, we need to find our lost heart. So as Manchus was saying that, well, if one loses uh, his chicken, he will find by all means to find uh, their chicken. But what if they lost their heart? Of course, we need to find it. And sometimes, uh, just like we now today, we, we were talking about this original heart, we never forget where we started. So we need to generate, we need to be aware of the activities of our heart. This is a very important reasoning um, to understand the root of the humanness. So in, in conclusion, uh, to help uh, you understand better about this hum humanness and we use the Professor Dew's sentence about the original heart as a core of the humanness is a culmination of the evolutionary process. It is not a static structure, it is a continuing becoming activities. So in this sense, human beings should not be conceived as being but becoming. So human beings as becoming are ceaselessly involving. So 
this has a cosmological as well as the anthropological significance. And I remember that there, uh, there's a sentence uh, said by the, the Xinzi, uh, another famous uh, Confucius, Confucius scholar. He, he was saying, I just compare the, uh, our human beings with some other uh, creatures. Fire and water possess energy, but they have no life. Grass and trees have life, but they have no consciousness. Birds and beasts have consciousness, but they have no sense of morality. Man possesses energy, life, consciousness, and in addition, a sense of morality. Therefore, he is the noblest being on earth. So remember that we are the noblest beings on the earth and uh, we need to always have this awareness of the uh, activities of our heart. So this is uh, the first episode. We're going to continue talking about Jin and Shu reciprocity. <laughs>